Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo. Hi, Iceman checking in. Oh yeah, Icebreaker, Breaker, Breaker, one, two, three. Nobody liked it, it didn't connect. That's my thing, that's what people, that's what mm, people think work about out. me. Yeah, they really good. like it. It happens. Uh, today we're talking about money. Yeah, crack was wild. What about money, Nikki? Um, well, specifically cash flow slash money management, because uh, we touched on this a little bit in our Q&A that we recently put up. Uh, I think it was like the last episode, and a lot of people wanted me to go more in depth about mm -hmm. it, and I think that's great. I think that this is a time where you should be forming good habits and um, using the time to like you know develop healthy habits, not only in money but also in in physical health and uh, mental health and relationships and all the things, all the areas that you're usually too busy to work on. Yeah, is an, it's a nice time now to actually develop those areas. So um, I love money management stuff. I, I kind of a nerd in that category. I'm very passionate about it. I could talk about it all day. Um, and I thought that it would be a good episode for people that would like to hear those tips. I, I never know what is the norm for people to know. So excuse me if some of them are basic, because I feel like some things that I think are just basic are things that people never like knew about. No, it's true. And then I'm that way in some other subjects where I'm like, like in fashion, I had no idea certain things were right. a certain way. I didn't True. know how to braid my hair. Like I didn't know how to cook or sew. And like some people are like, no one ever taught you to cook or sew. You know, like cause some some areas, everyone knows how to cook and sew. Right. Not here, bro. No, definitely not me. But um, yeah, I don't even want to sew. True. Do you want to cook? I heat things up. You do, yes. I would love to know how to cook. It would be so fun. Why isn't it something you work on then? I mean, it just seems it just overwhelming, and and all the measurements and math of it. That's how people feel about money. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I okay. know. Sell me on this money thing. All right, so before we go into the actual like how tos and tips, I think it's really important to start with money mindset. And for those of you, I can like hear you groaning because yeah. you're like you clicked on the I, video and I you're did. like you're like oh, I just want to know how. I know. Well, that, me this how. is you know what you know what actually this is a fair criticism because yeah. I feel like sometimes I want to read someone's fucking about something and then they're like let yeah. me tell you my life story first. I'm like no, no. no I don't want to hear your life story. This is not my life. Story. This is not my life story. But this I'm telling you right okay. now, if you are brushing this off as something that's like oh just get to the good shit, you're never gonna change your habits because this is the number one most important thing and I can't emphasize it enough. Okay, well now you pitched it well. That's a good sell. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so developing good habits, starting with training your way of thinking towards money uh, and, and wealth and success in general, as well as your emotions regarding spending money and debt are the things that are gonna help you manage money in the long run. It's almost like, um, like if you wanted to go on a diet health-wise, uh, if you want to lose weight or build endurance or strengthen your muscles, you have to develop good long-term habits. Um, going on a crash diet is the equivalent of when you just try to get rich quick. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. when you try to like- I'm gonna go buy a lot of tickets. Just tell me what to do and, yeah. and, then, and then let me make money from it. Like right. that's not, it's not gonna help you in the long run. And so I, I just firmly believe in constantly training your mind like you would at a gym. Like so, to save money and to, to be responsible with money, like that kind of thing? To read books on money. Okay. To read books, listen to podcasts, watch videos, um, listen to people like uh, you know like Dave Ramsey, people that, that are experts in that field. Yeah. And um, as well as psychological books and, and well-being and stuff that put you more in balance with yourself and lessen i think a lot of uh, emotional spending is like people that feel a lack like everyone else is buying things and getting things and and they just feel like they need to keep up somehow mm -hmm. so they'll they'll spend money frivolously to um make up for that but they just end up feeling empty and that's that's one psychological issue that i'm talking about that when you are developing your mind and like reading books and and watching videos that help you deal with those psychological issues yeah. Um, you no longer see money as a means to um, hoard or collect or or participate in flex culture or any of that stuff. What's it's, flex culture? Um, flex culture. Oh right, you're is flexing like, your 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 wealth on people. Yeah, it's, okay. and it's like it happens a lot in people that are like new rich people, like new money people, right. where they never had money and then they suddenly get a bunch of money and so they spend it on luxury cars and it. champagne bottles and it's like. Those people are, are the ones that go bankrupt the yeah. fastest because they didn't develop the habits. They just focused on the image of what they felt like a 
wealthy person looks like or a rich person looks like, so, but, and then they try to imitate that. No, I get it, but yeah. when you're saying be change your mindset, yeah, th- um, like about money or listen to mo- things about money, is it right. about saving money, about investing All, money? Money mindset. Okay, okay. So that, that's what the whole category I'm talking about right now. I mean, yes, absolutely do read the how-to books on management but those honestly you can read a blog post about it and about money management and i'll talk about it in this podcast episode too because it's not it's not it's very simple it's just not easy to do if you don't have the habits built in which is why i say invest your time in changing the mindset rather than thinking that money management is going to be like this big thing money management is not a big chore or a big mountain. Money management is very simple. It's the whole mindset and emotions that go into tackling that, that that part is the hard part. Because if you always had beliefs that there was never enough money or um, that you're always broke uh, or that money never stays with you or there's there's always too many bills and not enough money, those things are gonna follow you for the rest of your life. Okay. If I give you fifty thousand dollars, you're still gonna have those same problems. Right. You're still gonna be feel broke. You're, st- you're that money's gonna disappear right away. The lottery winner problem. Yes. Like said, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I think the best thing that you can do, especially if you're at a lack of money right now, is read books. Read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad is a good one. That's one of my favorite books. Um, Think and Grow Rich, Cash Flow Quadrant, The Millionaire Next Door. I'm currently reading a book called Four Hour Work Week, which I think is in lo- along the same category of that. But those, it's like feeding your brain nourishment mm-hmm. that helps you develop muscles of being able to handle respect and um, manage your money. Got it. And your cash flow. Love it. So that's number one. Now I'll get into the actual yeah. money management tips so you don't lose your mind. Thank you. Okay. Um, so number one, take inventory. Take a get a good financial snapshot of where you are right now. And what I mean by that is um, figure out where your income is coming from, all of the sources your income is coming from, figure out where all of your expenses are going, all of the source of, sources of expenses, look at your debt, um, to your debt, how much debt do you owe, and then how much are your assets making you? So, uh, what do you, And what if you're like, uh, what the fuck is an asset? An asset is something that makes you money. So, Debt is something that you owe someone else, yes. and assets are something that they owe you. So I bought a new car. Is that an asset? Nope. That is a liability. Is it a depreciating asset? Yes. And that's not an asset. Stop calling it that. Well, <laughs> it's a liability. I got it. Yeah. Your liabilities are things that um, don't bring you money. But isn't it an asset because I could I could trade it for money somewhere, not, but I just probably won't get as much as uh, when I first bought it. By definition, if you lose money, it's not an asset. So if you buy, pay for something and then you sell it at a cheaper price, you have just lost money that is not an asset. I just bought uh, some gold coins online. Is that an asset? Uh, it, de- it depends. If they appreciate in value, then yeah. I sure hope so. <laughs> then yeah, it would be an asset. Is a diamond ring an asset? Um, I don't know. I don't really know a lot about diamonds. I'd have to do research. Oh, okay. I recommend that if you were to invest into an asset, you should do a lot of research on it. God. I know this is not the tips that you were hoping to hear because no, it's all like, great. hey, do research and um, no, you know, invest in your mind first. But it is the number one thing I think everybody should do. And that when people come to videos where they're like, tell me how to make that money. Right. They never make it. They never or they get it and then they lose it because you don't know how to manage it or how to like, you know, use your brain to help you create habits. Do you think that a wife is an asset or a liability? Well, I have you as um, a passive income asset right now, but okay. I mean, some years it's a liability. I feel like, yeah, same. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No, you're not a liability? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I make my own money. Uh, and then I spend yours on the house and like boring stuff like bills yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really don't see my money. <laughs> Nah. I really just, well, just it just sort of goes to a place that I know it's going. Or don't going. you? Don't you see your money because uh, you have yeah, a house to live in? That's true. And, and then you get you packages have, a lot. Yeah, and you have lights over <laughs> your head. You know, when we started dating, um, I believe my boyfriend yeah. Steve Green yes. of seven years ago, a good, a good man, owed the IRS thirteen thousand dollars. Only that. 
Yeah, wow. right? That was after he, sure he paid for like some. More. It sure seemed like more. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I took on a liability when I started dating Fair you. Point. And Fair now point. how much do you owe the government? Zero. Yeah, well. But I owe banks quite a bit. Do you? Quite a bit. Well, we do. Yeah, we have we have got the mortgage. Oh, the mortgage, yeah. yeah. But I that's okay. But that's that's a that's an asset. Yeah. I mean, it depends, yeah. Cuz we have a but we have a, a we own a a, a domicile. A home. Yeah. I mean, and traditionally, if you look at history, um real estate always increases in mm-hmm. value over the long run. Right. But if let's say you bought right before 2008 and then it crashed like maybe you wouldn't consider that an asset so much yeah well anymore. in the interim but then if yeah. you waited then if you, you waited you would, yeah. then you're fine yeah. yeah but that's that's what i mean about con- about working on your emotions right is you can't be devastated when a crash happens or like what's happening right now where um you know it's like it's it sucks because like a lot of people are losing their jobs right now and I fucking feel for them because yeah. if that is your only source of income and you didn't save which a, a lot of Americans don't even have 1200 bucks 500 bucks yeah. not even 500 bucks yeah in savings. For an emergency though yeah like, yeah I know so I feel for you but but that's why I want to help people like I want I want to help like the root of the issue and not just the band-aid of like do this with your money, yeah. you know? Well, I remember, man, living paycheck to paycheck, and I would get my paycheck, and then I would try to, like, treat myself a little bit, because basically, it all went to rent, and then yeah. my truck payment, and then at the end of the day, I wanted to have something for all the things that I worked for, and so I would go to Target and buy a movie, because I love movies, but, it, like, it was really not good to do that, like, buying a $22 movie or a $15 yeah, movie. Yeah, that's, it depends on, like, the percentage, right? Yeah. So I felt the same way when I was super, super broke. I still, you, you, you still have to have a something that you're looking forward to. Something mm-hmm. that what are you all, what are you doing this exactly. for? You know, what are you living life for? Is it just you're working to, you're living to work, or you're working to live? You right. know, and I, uh, I would have the same thing, but my budget was five dollars a week. So five dollars, and I'm gonna get into this, but like five dollars a week, I would um, go to the, I had a ritual. And, but it was more about the ritual than it was about the money, which is what I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, because it's not the money that makes you happy. It's the it's the rituals and and replacing uh, physical, tangible, like uh, surf, surface level goods, materials. That's what I'm talking about. Material goods with um, things that don't cost money are what will be more fulfilling and create better habits for you. So for me, it was five bucks. I would go to the farmer's market. I would buy some fresh flowers for $2. And then um, I would buy a 99 cent nail polish from the gas station. Yep. And um, I would go like look at all the things in Urban Outfitters just to look at them. And then I, I would, with you. and then I'd buy some like strawberries or whatever was in season that, that, uh, during that time yeah. and then I'd go home and make brunch out of like the little fruits and it's stuff cute. that I made Very cute. and it was like yeah and it was like a ritual it took about three hours it was something I looked forward to all week yeah but it's it was basically $5. what you do down Animal Crossing Absolutely. And like I, I don't that think too. there's very many differences between Animal that Crossing the is my life like yeah. that, how I play Animal Crossing is exactly how I play life like, yeah and, and and from money to when Nikki lifestyle plays, and, to everything. What we're talking about is when Nikki plays Animal Crossing, she wakes up in the morning as her character. And I go to and chores. She, and she goes and she puts on her outfit for the day. Mm-hmm. And then she goes and does her household chores. And then she goes outside and picks up weeds. Yeah, I and, go water. I water all my flowers. Collects fruit. Mm-hmm. And then she goes to the market and she sells her fruit. And then she buys like like a little treat for herself. Yeah. So I'll get into that. It's the cutest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, so yeah, take a financial snapshot because if you don't know where your current situation is, if you don't know where you stand financially right now, then you won't know what areas to improve on. And I think that's the biggest issue for a lot of people is that they're too scared to even like look at what their yes, situation they get is. Yes, anxiety from their they, situation. They, you're living paycheck to paycheck. I remember you're just, that well. Hoping that enough money comes in to pay for the bills that you have and that the ratio is okay. Yeah. But it, it will do you a lot of good to actually know the numbers. How much are you spending per month? What are you spending it on? Is it that you're buying a mocha frappuccino every fucking day at Starbucks? Right. Maybe that could be a treat that you get like once a week or you know something like that. I'm not saying to eliminate treats um, altogether or rewards altogether, but... I think that sometimes people think it will fill a void. Yeah, right. And it never does. No. It, instead, it makes you, it temporarily gives you satisfaction, 
but then in the long run stresses you out way more. Correct. Um, and I'll get to that too because I want to talk about delayed gratification. But we're talking about management tips and uh, that's number one. Number two is pay yourself first. So this was a concept that I never thought about until I read books, uh, uh, read books and talked to a lot of people that were wealthy and that managed their money well. But um, yeah, paying yourself first. Like when you get a paycheck, put at least 10% into savings. This I never did. Yes. I never even came close to doing this. You are so good at money that I remember getting checks and you you would take it and put half of it into savings because of taxes. Yeah, so- Shit um, like that I never even would have considered doing. Hmm, that, I wonder why you, know. you were $13,000 indebted to the government when I met you. <laughs> Tell me about it. I, don't even, I still don't know to this day. <laughs> so when you get a paycheck, put at least 10% into savings, preferably high interest. You can look up what is what banks give you the highest interest. I have my savings at um, Ally. It's like a, I don't know, it's like something like 1.5%. It's 1% at least, yeah. It's at least 1%. It's much better than like if you went to Bank of America who gives you like 0.03% <laughs> or something. Fuck you, Bank of America, that, my, my bank. I have Bank of America for checking, but like yeah, but suck. I hate that for savings. Hell no, that would don't. That, none of that is even worth it. Um, but they, yeah, they charged me so much in overdraft when I was poor, man. You're paying it's the a rip, poor it's tax, a scam. bro. It's a scam. It's a scam. Thirty-seven fifty per charge, and then they charged it four times because they kept running the card on to yeah. see if it would work. And I'm like, this is a it's joke. Just mean. It's so mean. It's so mean. It's very they, cruel. And then they get bailed out. When oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they get bailed out, but then oh why, why didn't you have to pay me a fee? Yeah, why did you have you, the you, best? I fucking hate you, but I it's okay. I love you too because you're a necessary evil. <laughs> um, <laughs> but put, putting ten percent, at least ten percent of the savings uh, at a high interest savings account. When I first started my Ally account, it was five percent, but you know times are changing. Yeah. Um, and then when I was Allies making, got to be a bank too. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they give you one point five percent. Well, well was, that's because okay, real quick for those of you listening, the banks take your money and they invest with your money. They make money they on your money. That's yes. what that's the game of the banks, right? So that's what's so crazy is that you don't ever get a return on that. And allies like, hey, we'll give you one percent, and, and, like, that, and we're, we're like, that's kissing fucking their tight yeah. because in our country that's considered incredible yeah. that they're actually giving us something <laughs> for the money that they hoard. Like on, on our behalf. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a lot different years ago, but. Yeah, they know what they can get away with now. Uh, I think yeah. you know. Well, yeah, it's easy when you own both houses of Congress. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll move. We'll out move of there. on, we'll right? Move on. So, like Steve mentioned earlier, when I was making money as an independent contractor, I would put away fifty percent of my money immediately because after the government collects, it's really it's really comes down to again ten to fifteen percent of pay. But that goes to you first, you know, and um, it's. Like for me, it's just out of sight, out of mind. If it's in my checking, it will find a way of getting spent. Of course. I don't know why that is. Uh, it's true. Like though. when you have excess cash, you're like, well, I, I just keep it in the in the pile. No, well, it'll get spent. Because when you're looking at visual treats, like you're on some website or you're on some Etsy shop, you're like, oh, I can get this. Yeah. It, it doesn't come out of your mind. Right. So I put it away. Put it away. Put it away. And it helps might as so well much, man. collect interest while it's being put away. And if you're thinking right now, like, well, I can't afford to put away 10%. If you absolutely can't do 10%, start with 5%, but build up to 10%. I'll never forget my first year of paying taxes with you as my chick. Mm -hmm. And after you had already been managing like our finances for like, you know, what, two years or something, I we get the tax bill and we had the money to pay for it. I was like, this is crazy. We don't got to figure it out. We don't got to do payment plans. We don't got to fucking sell it. That's right. We don't got to sell a bunch of uh, babushkas. <laughs> <laughs> babushkas yeah or little knickknacks i know because those babushkas uh, they I value those That's i really I need them. these That's i need I those um i'm so glad we still have all of our babushkas look i wouldn't have them if not for you right so if uh if you think if you think oh i can't even put away five percent um i feel like you can so a lot of people say they can't but then how do you find a way if i give you a bill right now or you had to pay a bill like you would find the way to pay it, if especially if they were like, we're gonna seize your assets if you don't right. pay this bill. You're gonna find a way to pay it, but you don't find a way to pay yourself. True, and that sucks because in the long run, you can't afford not to pay yourself, and and you're working for your money. Okay, like you should, you deserve it. You deserve to. But what do I deserve to do pay, with it? Though? Pay yourself first. Pay myself in what way? Um, uh, to do what? 
To put it in savings, okay. first of all. Got it. Okay. So you're paying your, when you say pay yourself, it's, it means I say savings. savings. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. Um, and, and if you can't, absolutely can't find a way, you're like, I still can't find a way for 5%, then you need to find a way to increase your income by at least a few hundred dollars a month. Um, and there are so many ways to do that. And I can talk about some of those ways later when we talk about Gig setting up multiple stuff. streams of income. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the third thing is once you have at least a three to five month emergency fund in your savings, then you can start to use that savings, that 10% to um, invest, to pay off debt, and to maybe like give yourself a treat here and there. Exactly. Um, I like I actually like uh, Dave Ramsey has a little system of baby steps mm -hmm. and I haven't read too much David Ramsey so I'm not going to like quote him and act like I know him but I did come across his baby steps and I agreed with most of it um, if you don't know him then you should call him David if you know him then then you should call him Dave I don't know him so yeah, David Dave, David, David Ramsey uh, his the first step for it is to start the first baby step on his list is to get $1,000 to start an emergency fund. Then the step two is to pay off all your debt using the debt snowball. Step three is to have three to six months of expenses and saving. Step four is to invest 15% of household income into Roth IRAs and pre-tax retirement. Step five is college funding for children. Step six is pay off home and early. And step seven is build wealth and give. So I agree with most of that. Debt snowball, by the way, is about attacking debt like hard, like where you take a fuck ton of your income that you that you were going to put in savings and you use that to pay off. Debt. Really? Because yeah. that's exactly how I paid off my debt. It's aggressive. Yeah. I've never um, read Dave. David, David please, thank Ramsey's you. Yeah. book, but um, that's how my dad paid off debt mm -hmm. when I was a kid, and I'll never. Well, that's how the debt system set up, right? Is for them to make they make more money the longer that you stay in debt. Yes. So if you aggressively attack it, then you're beating you're beating that system. Yeah, but, and I, I and think, but, and you're beating the plan. You just have to be motivated. Like you just have to really want it enough. Sacrifice when you go out. You go out to dinner with friends and stuff like yeah. that. You don't eat while you're there you just sit there and drink water or whatever or you maybe you don't go out to dinner with friends like there's a lot of things that we all do like superfluously that you don't have to do yeah that you don't think about because you're like well it's my friend's birthday or whatever but it's like you know what i can't make it I, i'm trying to rebuild my i'm trying to change my right. fucking financial situation if your objective is strong enough you will find a way exactly. to make it happen and so yeah that's that is i went really aggressively in paying off debt that's where the only way I've i seen it work. paid off 50 percent of my entire debt, I saved up enough money to pay off 15% or 50%, sorry, not 15, 50%. And then the next month I paid off 50% of that. And then the next month I paid off 50% of that. And it, the numbers got less and less and less and less until it got to the point where I just paid off the, the whole thing. I mean, why do they let you put cash down, right? But then they say, you don't have to put cash down, it's all good, but then your payment goes up. Like it's all, that's the game, right? Yeah. So the more cash that you put down, it's, it's less fun to do, but it actually helps you in the long run because you have less of a payment. But people don't think about that. They just think about how fun it is not to pay for anything right now and I'll pay for it later. And that's how they get in trouble. And it gives you stress, man. I know. I don't like stress. A any amount of money is worth it to get rid of that stress, that like hovering, <laughs> the worst you feeling. owe me Being in stress, the worst feeling that, ever. that weight on your chest. Yeah. Oh, it feels so good <sighs> to pay that off and not have someone be hounding you. Yes. For, and they do hound you. Yeah. They, they really do. Yeah. I've, I've had some calls with those fuckers that is just nuts. I don't like that feeling. So that motivated me enough to just aggressively attack that debt. Um, I had a debt guy told me, he told me that he's like, I'll, you'll never get, you're never going to get out of debt, man. You're never going to do it. Like, cause you're not even <laughs> like, you're not even taking this seriously on this phone call right now. Like you're not going to pay us anything. I had nothing to pay them. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like fucking beating my character up. Mm. Like, like that's kind of the tactics that they end up using at certain places. It's pretty wild. Just like you're a piece of shit if you don't yeah, pay for this, right? <laughs> like, hey, you don't, you don't keep your word. You don't do what you say you're gonna do, kind of shit. And I'm like, damn, brother, this guy is a fucking maniac. I told him never fucking call me again. And then I stopped paying out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also said you stopped paying out of spite because your girlfriend is the one that that made you in debt. Oh well, yeah, that was that was a whole thing. I know I didn't pay. That's what sucks about my debt is that it wasn't mine, <laughs> but I but I had my name on the card. Ah, oh, don't See, do that. Doesn't folks. it feel so good to have a wife that doesn't? Oh, it's great. I, I, I oh, was is kidding. This so great. A wife is not a depreciating oh, asset. Thank you. A wife is thank an asset. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. So then I want to talk about delayed gratification because I think the reason that people get into a lot of debt is because they only are looking at minimum payments and they're like, well, I could pay thirty dollars a month for right. this multiple thousand oh. dollar thing. Oh. 
you know and then i'll pay 30 percent more than it costs yeah in the long run because i don't want to pay for it right now exactly because i want the thing now because i need it now yes and delayed gratification uh studies have found that people uh, or well the, the definition of delayed gratification is um Deferred gratification describes the process that the subject undergoes when the subject resists the temptation of an immediate reward in preference for a later reward. Oh. And studies Wait, ha- say that again slower. Uh, delayed gratification describes the process that the subject undergoes when the subject resists the temptation of an immediate reward in preference for a later reward. That is perfectly stated. I love that. Well, the dictionary did a really good job. They did. Yeah. And studies have found that people that have developed the ability to delay gratification tend to be more successful and more happy in life. It's a skill, man. It's definitely a skill. Yeah. Because choosing to have something right now might feel good, but making the effort to have discipline and manage your impulses can result in bigger or better rewards in the future. Over time, delaying gratification will improve your self-control and ultimately help you achieve your long-term goals faster. That's from Psychology Today. Can we take a moment? for me to pat myself on the back. Sure. I have gotten so good at not needing to buy anything. Yeah. I am a fucking master. I'm a zen fucking master at this shit, right? And even when there's something that I really want, I know how to get it out of my system by, I, I check it out at least five minutes a day. I check it out five minutes a day. Like what the thing that I wanna buy, I check it out five minutes a day, five minutes a day, five minutes a day, right? Mm -hmm. And if I do that for a month and I still want it, I'll maybe buy it, right? But I never want it by the end of the month. <clears throat> so it's not really something that you really want. Well, right. But in the moment, you do. In the yeah. first five days, first seven days, you first find something. That's why That's why click marketing is all about you. they find out you're interested in something and they beat you the fuck up until you buy it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like the interim, those first 72 hours of you finding something that you want to buy are the most likely time that you're going to buy it. Yeah. And so they really inundate you with that marketing uh, wherever you go, whatever site you're on, they're, yeah. they're hitting you with it, right? Because that's when it works the best. But the farther away you get from that initial impulse, the less likely it is you're going to buy it. And and they all know that. So It's pretty crazy how, how advertising technology has and it's psychology gone up like that. At yeah. the same time. So if you can bend the psychology to you more towards your favor where you know that the farther away you are from that initial thing is more likely a more clear-eyed decision you're going to be making an educated decision and not an impulsive decision and that's what right. I, I started doing it man 30 day thing do the steve green method 30 days i'm telling you it'll change your life because i used to buy something every fucking time i got paid i thought it's time to reward myself to fill this fucking void in my heart that that's like hey i work for my money i need to have something for it yeah as soon as I started doing this shit, I did not, I do not buy anything now. I really don't. I, I go buy shampoo and shit. That's it. Like I buy things, but yeah. it's the same system that I had before where it's a very, very, very small percentage of our income. Mm-hmm. I dedicate to like a monthly reward fund or like a treat, a treat fund because yep. I do think that I delayed gratification so much in my 20s where I didn't spend money on shit in my 20s. Mm-hmm. I had two pairs of shoes, one pair of jeans, like five shirts, and I wore those for years. I didn't spend any money on I'm going out. I'm the master out. of wearing five shirts, bro. True. You're talking to the master. But like in my 20s as a female, right. I didn't True. spend money. That's right. I didn't go party with my friends. No, you I didn't, didn't spend- come out a lot. We, I didn't. We would all go out and stuff, totally sketch days, and you didn't come well, out. I was working. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I worked as a cocktail server, so those were our busiest nights were the nights where you guys wanted to go out on the weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and by I, the way, we went out to chain restaurants and had a Rita or something, and then we all saw a movie together. That's like, we're not, it's not, we're, we weren't getting Crystal in the club or right, nothing. Right, right, right. But like a lot of people, young people especially, they go out clubbing, they go out, they spend loads of money on drinks. You get your paycheck on a Friday, you, it's gone by Monday, <laughs> you know? Can you imagine if that was your thing that fulfills your little I know. Your meter? It's like, I got to go get bottle service. Uh, I'm sorry. It's like my thing. It's like what I love. I, I, like, there's a lot of when like. When I get there, I love it. My cousin was like that, and I never, I, I don't like going out like around a lot of people anyway, yeah. but um, yeah, I could never understand spending that much money on a temp, a, such a temporary thing. It's like a, a night of drinking, like that's where all your money goes. I don't know. And clothes, like she bought, buys designer clothes. I've never... 
could never get my head around designer clothes unless let's I mean that's some people's fashion or that passion yeah they have a passion for fashion yeah I don't understand it so Me I didn't either. have any purses I didn't have any designer clothes I, didn't, I do want to get Balenciaga shit though because I think it's funny it's funny yeah no like especially if I wore it I think that'd be sure. stupid I mean that's what like a waste. that's like a little fun thing for you yeah, yeah right yeah. but my point is I delayed gratification so much in my 20s that now I do spend money because I feel like one, it's such a small percentage of my income. It's the same as spending that $5 a week on the farmer's market when I was very broke. Yeah. Um, it's the same concept. It's the same amount. It's just a little larger now because it's like the, the percentage has gone up. Yeah. Um, and I, but I only, since I have that set amount, I know that if I spend some of it on this thing, then I won't be able to spend anything on anything else for the month. Right. So if it's early in the month, I'm like, well, I don't know what else is out there for the month. So a lot of times I don't even spend that whole budget because I'm just waiting for like something that I really, really want. Well, when we return, we're going to discuss far more about money, far more about money breaking, uh, money, habit breaking, habit forming. Yeah. And habit breaking. And more tips. Well, I sure hope so. We'll be right back. All right, I want to give a shout out to Best Fiends. It is a very fun, very addictive pl- game to play. I downloaded it originally because we were on a long flight to, um, I was going to New Zealand. It's like a 10 hour flight. And I wanted like something that didn't use the internet to connect because it's so frustrating. A lot yes. of my games I didn't realize needed the internet to connect. And it's so addicting. I play it all the time. So if you're looking for a fun way to pass the time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, your answer is best fiends. It does have really good graphics and visuals and I like that you get to earn characters I really just like the idea of feeling productive when I'm doing something very much not productive that makes sense yeah Yeah. like you get to earn things it feels rewarding yeah and I get to like earn characters that help me earn more things in the game and then uh, you get to like earn going to new lands and it was almost like I was traveling while I was traveling that's fun like the reward of going to a new place without having been without the plane landing yet yeah yeah so uh, it's a unique and exciting puzzle experience, unlike any other puzzle games out there. And they update the game monthly, so there's always new stuff going on. Like, it's not just the same game every time. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what kind of events they're going to drop, what kind of challenges they have in store for you. You're always getting the best fiends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you're not getting the mediocre ones. No, the you have your best fiends. Yeah. It's like Friends, but without the R. So engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. What else do you need to know? Go freaking play it. Get it. What are you waiting for? Well, wait for the end of the episode and then yeah, you'll yeah, play yeah. it. Yeah. Or you can download it while you're on the episode. Yeah, download it now and then you can play it right after. Yeah. Or you could play it, oh, I know, hmm. you could play it on your phone and then you could listen to shit they don't tell you on your computer. While you are While you're playing, playing on your phone. Yes. Whoa. You could also listen to it on your phone while you're playing on your phone. What, you can? Yeah. I know, technology is crazy, right? Good job, Best Fiends. Okay, if you're like me and you go to the grocery store or you go to the drugstore and you're looking at the prices of razors and you're like, what in the absolute heck is going on? Uh, all the time I am asking myself this. I'm a deals man. Do you know this about me? I know this about you. I need to get my deals. I and know. thanks to Harry's, there are actually deals now on razors. Sometimes it's annoying how much you need to get the deals. Listen, it feels- But not in this case. It feels like I'm winning when I get a good deal. I know. And thanks to Harry's, there are actual deals in the razor blade market, which there were none before because of one company, and I won't name them. It's, <laughs> I will not name them. It's also pretty cool that um, they send it directly to you, you know, for people that need to stay inside- uh, it's cool, and you experience the quality of a hairy shave in just a few days from the convenience of your own home. So they send it to you, man. Like, millions of people have tried this. You can go get your special trial right now going to harrys.com slash stdty. Yeah, they cut out the middleman, so manufacturing blades in their own German blade factory that's been honing precision blades for a century. So you you're getting can... high-quality precision blades. At $2 per blade. You can't beat it. You just can't. I've looked around. You can't beat the deal. Yeah, and you can feel good about your purchase because a 100% quality guarantee is in place. So if you don't love your shave, you let them know. They'll give you a full refund. 1% of the proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations that benefit men's health, which I think that's kind of nice. That's awesome. 
And listeners of our show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash stdty. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip. It's got a good weight to it. I like that. Wonderful. There's five blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade. Rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated and feeling cool. And a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. So go to harrys.com slash stdty to get, start shaving better today. I know I did. That's harrys.com slash stdty. I did, I did it years ago before you ever did it, so don't All even right. look at me don't thinking brag. you did it first. I did don't it first. Get, Harry's. Take her down a notch. No, I did. Okay, we're back. Okay, so along your lines of uh, how your method of the Steve Green method. Yeah, the Steve. I have a similar method too. Where thirty days to um, thirty days to um, not buying an object. Because if you if you have. Because your reason for buying something might be different than mine. My psychological, emotional thing was that when I get anxiety, I feel like buying stuff would fill that void. Yes. And especially when I first started making some money, it was like very tempting to just buy a bunch of things, right? And it never felt that good afterwards. Like it mm -hmm. felt really good in the moment, but then afterwards, I'm just like, oh man, like what? I I buy all those things. That was dumb. I usually return a lot of things. Um, but now my method is it gives that same satisfaction of my anxiety feeling like it's got that void filled, but not spending the money, which is I fill my card up. Like I fill my. That's fun. Yeah. I go, I I've browse for hours. I'll browse on like Urban Outfitters or West Elm or wherever I'm like, oh, I want that pretty thing. And I'll fill my card up and then I'll just leave it. <laughs> great and i'll get emails that it's like you're you still have items in your car i'm like i know i'm fucking no they're sitting over there one thing that i did that was actually very productive and actually ended up helping me save money in the long run was when i was gonna buy remember when i was gonna buy a computer mm -hmm. i needed more i wanted to have more power i wanted to be able to edit on it, all kinds of cool shit and i was like so i would go to these pc building sites that are usually marked up right like an i buy power or like um not Alienware because that shit's like way marked up, but stuff like that. <laughs> okay, but the, these websites you can custom build PCs that, okay. that are like high powered, and usually a lot of gamers do it or or people who do video editing. So I would go there, and I did my thirty day thing. I would do it. I would I would custom build a PC five minutes a day. It really was like more like fifteen because it's pretty involved. Mm -hmm. But by the end of it, I knew so much more about the parts that I that would go into this machine and why I needed them that me and my brother just went to Fry's Electronics, bought the parts, and built my computer like ourselves. You, see, that's something that I think it's overlooked about being broke is like you get so resourceful and creative. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like uh, if I had all the money in the world, I'd have so much junk from like just immediately being able to purchase it, but instead I had to like build skills in order to do it. That's how I learned how to do most of the things that I do for income, like video editing. I produced a series, you know, the series you were in, Audition Fail, yeah. um, and I needed it to be edited, and I had never edited anything before, but all the editors were like, the cheapest I could find, and this is pretty cheap, was 500 bucks to edit six episodes. That's really cheap. Way cheap. Still couldn't afford it. So five hundred dollars was you might as well have asked for like a million dollars. Like right. I did not that's have. Like, that's like half your rent and yeah. yeah. And I just didn't have that money um, at all, zero of it. So I uh, YouTube was YouTube space space was offering editing classes, and I just took classes. But there's free tutorials online everywhere, and I just uh, learned how to edit on on Premiere. And yeah. So you you picked up the skill. Yeah, and you developed that skill, and now that skill serves me for. Ever. Like, even when I hired editors, I knew who was a good editor and who wasn't because I knew how to edit my own stuff. Dude, when me and my brother built my computer, not only did I know so much about the parts because I did that for 30 days, but I also, at the end of it, knew that I did want this this machine. Yes. Right? And then after that, when I wanted to build a Bitcoin mining rig, I knew how to do it mm -hmm. because it was just building a bigger computer. Mm. And so, and I knew I wanted to do the Bitcoin mining rig thing. So then me and my brother were able to build it together. And, you know, he does a lot of the, the putting it all together part because, <laughs> because him and my dad used to do that together. Like yeah. when we were kids and I was like, hey, whatever. So you just kind of oversee. Well, no, I am really good at figuring out when when there's a problem. Like oh. when we had a problem with my with building my computer. I know I know I'm such a boomer level to everybody, but when we had a problem building my my custom PC or whatever, 
uh, I was able to diagnose what the problem was, like when we we had a hang up, and then when we, had, we were building the mining rig, it was the same thing. So we we together as a team were able to do it. But like I got that knowledge from understanding more about pewters from my thirty days of research. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It's picking up a skill. Like yeah, you said. totally. And um, the other thing is, is if I fill up my cart and then like a month later, like after the end of 30 days, if I still really want that thing, then it's something that may be worth purchasing. Exactly. But the point is, is that you're respecting your money. You're respecting where it goes. You're not spending it frivolously. If you, I've mentioned this in a, in a couple different episodes, but if you treat money like you're dating it, like you're courting money and think of it as like the level of respect you would treat a partner, um, it, it, absolutely changes your financial picture because instead of just spending it everywhere and like spending it on trash items like you wouldn't take your partner to some trash place you'd want to really like treat them nice and yeah like for sure respect it so you only i only buy when i when that particular item would bring a lot of joy or meaning into my life mm -hmm. right and it, it it really forms a whole different way of living and um it's kind of similar to that marie kondo thing where everything in your house by the end of decluttering should be things that fill you with joy so even if it's like a much smaller amount of things, they're all, they're so much more rich in what they bring you. I love that. And yeah. you know what doesn't bring me joy in our house? Hmm. That fucking lemon squeezer. Why? Because I, I love it when we use it to make a drink or something. Yeah. I hate I it when we got to clean it. I hate it. What's well, so easy. The, the, the lime, the lime, lime juices, it's they so get easy. all coagulated on the fucking end of it. And oh, it's so hard to clean those oh, fuckers. Oh, because you're talking about cleaning it after it's been sitting on the counter for three days after you use exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Instead of That's just cleaning it That's the standard amount of time right. that you leave it on the counter for after. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Does not bring me joy. Um, another way that you can develop the skill of delayed gratification is just by knowing what you're doing it for. Like if you have a goal in mind, because sometimes I feel like it's harder to develop habits. Like if you're trying to lose weight, but you don't know why, like you don't know like how much weight you want to lose or why you're losing the weight. It just doesn't happen. You just continue right. to eat junk food or like you'll slip up a bunch because you don't have a strong reason for why you're doing something. Right. You really have to make those deep seated changes in order to like change. So for me, I'm not really money motivated per se, like it doesn't like thinking about making loads of money doesn't like motivate me but it's the stuff that I can do with the money for me I really love building things and creating things and money buys me the time to do that to create and to spend time um do, building things that I enjoy that maybe don't bring me a lot of money or maybe they do later much later but you know I'm really passionate about it right like watercoloring yeah yeah like I like I love crafting and hobbies and stuff and yeah. you're very good at watercoloring and so for me, it's nice to buy that time back. I'd rather have money to pay an editor or whatever and then have that time to like, that makes work sense. on stuff. Um, another tip, of the number four, is I never put anything on credit card that I can't afford in cash. If I don't have the cash to back that up, I do not purchase it with a credit card. That's hard, man, because a lot of people count on that plastic. They're like... Yeah, that's how they end up in, in very bad situations. And we did a whole episode on credit cards, mm -hmm. on credit in general with Joe DiTacawa. It was a really good episode. I highly recommend you watch that episode. But yes, use credit cards. I use credit cards to build credit because yeah. you need credit. I mean, it's like another necessary evil. Um, that's how they trap you. Yep. But never, I never That's spend a great rule. That's a great rule. If I do not have the cash to back it up and I always pay it off immediately. Yes, that is great. By the way, paying off the entire balance at the end of the month helps you so much. Yes. Um, the fifth tip, and this is a really important one, is to develop multiple streams of income, specifically passive streams of income. So some examples of streams of income that you can develop are jobs, and your job is a stream of income, gigs, selling goods, creating a product, interest, ad revenue. Um, you can Google or YouTube, like look up on YouTube online jobs that give you additional income. So earlier when I was like, find a way to make an extra couple hundred dollars a month, there are jobs like that. Keep, they just keep popping up on my feed. I think cause I was like looking at, um, money videos yeah. that like these random videos of like make a couple hundred dollars online, like legit ways to make yeah. a couple extra or hundred eBay online people or even drop shipping companies. Yeah. eBay. Um, you can, uh, th there's companies that will pay you to caption videos mm. and you're making like, you'll make like 300 bucks or whatever for the day. Um, you could go on Fiverr and you could like get hired to do like different little gigs. A lot of them are very tedious gigs, but they'll give you an extra 
you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. For sure. Um, and then uh, I feel like it, it doesn't really matter what profession you have. You can use that to create multiple streams of income. And a lot of people either don't know or they, they just think it's too much work or they don't care about doing it. But I think it's it's something that's so important to do. Um, so, like, for example, suppose you're an artist. Um, maybe you have a job creating your art. So my friend is an animator. She has a job where she animates. the the. And that's one stream of income. But maybe then you sell some of your art that you do on the weekends. That's another stream of income. Or if you take commissions, that's another stream of income. Um, maybe you make video tutorials showcasing your process and you put them online and then you make ad revenue from them. That's a third stream of income. Maybe you develop a more advanced course that you sell your website, as that you sell on a website or Skillshare or something like that. That's a fourth stream of income. Maybe you have affiliate links to the supplies you use or affiliate links on your website. That's a fifth stream of income. Maybe you get sponsored by the brand of paint that you use. That's a sixth stream huge. of income. That'd be huge. Maybe you develop your own line of art supplies. That's a seventh stream of income. And I could seriously go on and on and on off of that one skill that you have that you possess. And there's something that you have that you're very passionate about or that you know more about more than anyone else. And you can turn that into a stream of income. It just takes time. Like it takes time to build those assets. But I feel like it's something that we have more of right now during quarantine. Yeah, buddy, you better, like, you we better be able time. to make time for this right now. And you could do it with any profession. I know an orthodontist who just got famous on TikTok and he gets sponsored on TikTok yeah. and he has an, an Instagram and he gets brand deals from Instagram. He's an orthodontist. He okay? has his own orthodontist <laughs> shoes that he sells. Yes. It's he gets sponsored crazy. by people. It's, it's, but you, it doesn't matter what profession you have. You can have your job and then you could also create other multiple streams of income from that job. It's crazy. If you have a skill, I guarantee you there are people that want to know more about your skill. They want to learn that thing. And we're in an information digital age where you can easily do that. You can easily monetize that skill. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like it's also a safety net in times like now. Um, where you know like if you had one stream of income and then that got cut off you're you kind of feel you're scrambling yeah you're scrambling right now um but it sucks because that was the way that we were told like we were told go to school yeah get your get one a degree, job get your job that pays you right, forever, enough money and, and then pay work, for your retirement yeah exactly right and then maybe maybe you were told to put money in a 401k that would help you for retirement but that's about it that's like so maybe two streams of income max but that model was never going to last, though. No. And it's not how people get wealthy. And it's not how people get uh, financially free. P you get financially free by building passive streams of income. So those are multiple streams of income in general. But then passive streams of income um, are like real estate. So buying real estate and then renting it out. And then the rent that you're receiving pays for the mortgage and you profit on top of that. Can you imagine what's going to happen? Like within the next ten years, where you're gonna have now they now they do you have web cameras in in every classroom. Yeah, imagine having web cameras in every university where like a, a, the quote unquote high tier elite education is now accessible to millions of people potentially worldwide, and now everyone's there's no disparity of of that kind of education. Like you, right? Like anyone can be in that classroom. You don't have to pay for a dorm to fucking go there and like sit there and learn this shit. You could just sit wherever the fuck you are in your domicile and watch it on a webcam and learn. It's gonna be nuts. But that's what, that's what I've been saying for years when I, I dropped out of college, you know, after the first year. And my parents were shocked because I was always the academic one of between me and my brother. And he finished college and I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't feel like it was worth the investment. Mm -hmm. So even though my parents were paying for it for me and they're like, but we're paying for it. Like we are, you're not gonna get this opportunity again. You need a degree in order to get a job that's gonna pay you well. And I just didn't feel like after seeing people that graduate and not be able to get a job that pays them well and then being in massive amounts of debt, I just didn't think that going to college was as good of an investment as it was in the 80s right it's just not right and no. then even so even what i just talked about where you could drop a webcam in every classroom yeah. and you would solve a lot of this problem with people not getting education 
the 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 group that's going to fight that the hardest are the colleges who are making fuck tons of money off people living at the colleges and spending money at the colleges and the businesses at the colleges who are who make money off of everyone buying lunches and dinners there and breakfasts yeah, there and college culture. There's a whole industry that's built around the colleges that yeah. will fight and claw to the death to not educate people who could be dropped into these classrooms. Absolutely, because well, because right now isn't doesn't the government fund student loans yes yes yeah, so they have a uh, and they make money they off set, of it. exactly they make, a profit. they make a profit off of it which is disgusting to and me and they even legislated it so that if you wanted to uh, file for bankruptcy say you're not allowed to you can't do it like yeah. so where so every industry you can file for bankruptcy you can fire chapter 11 you have a business or whatever mm -hmm. you can that's all legit but if you're a, a middle class person who's just trying to who's fucked because of what just happened maybe with with the economy getting shut yeah. down you can't you can't file for bankruptcy. So interesting. So the government uh, that pays that has our public schools trains you to believe that you have to go to college to get a job, and so uh, otherwise you're fucked forever, yes. right? And then they're the ones that you borrow money from and owe for the rest of your life for going to college yes. to get a job that never pays you enough. And to this system was set up across multiple administrations. Mm. That's why hyperpartisan people to me are dumb fucks because. <laughs> They don't realize that both parties work together to fuck you. Yeah. It's instead they go, well, I got my team. I'm wearing my jersey. Right. So what I'm trying to say is I've been saying for years that um, since we're in the digital age, we like this information is free. Like you can learn how to do anything. You don't even and I'm not telling people to not go to college. Like if you needed to go there for like a profession, if you want if you want to be a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, absolutely. You need to go to college. That's an investment that is going to lead to that profession. But for a lot of people, they're just going to college to go to college because that's what they were told to do. Yes. It's not, and, and they were told that if they get a degree that they'll have some level of security and that's just not true Correct. anymore. So I feel- And we're not anti-college. If you want to no, go no, be no. a doctor, go to fucking college. That's what Hello. I just said, yeah. yeah right, right, but I just need to re reiterate because a lot of people out or there like, love to yeah. say we're anti-college. No, so I'm I have to say not. we are not anti-college. Fuck I'm, you. I'm saying that for, the, for a lot of people, that don't know what they want to do in life, college is not necessarily the answer. Um, until you figure out what you want to do and then you're like, oh, college is a necessary step and that's a good investment because you know what you're investing your money into. Yeah. Um, but there are, you could learn anything and I think that developing a skill is way more valuable right now in this economy and in this era than just getting a degree to say you have a degree. Correct. But that is the lie that they're going to continue to sell you is that you need a degree from some high established uh, university in order to get any sort of good job. And that's just not a guarantee for people anymore. Absolutely not. I was a waitress with like five people. Like there weren't a lot of people in the staff, but like five people that went to like really good universities, NYU, like, like really good universities. And they were waitressing with me because they couldn't get a job. I mean, right. Yeah. And, and this happens all the time and it's going to keep happening, especially right now where, you know, unemployment numbers just went yeah. through the roof. So, so that's why we're doing this episode. You may not have a lot of money to invest right now, but you may have a lot of time to invest right now. And in a lot of instances, I, th I feel like that's almost better because right. you're, you can use that to develop a skill. You can also use it to develop assets right now that will generate income for you later. As soon as and don't start tomorrow, man. You got to start right now. Like, yeah, really, really, because like this is this is the time to do it. And then you know, like so, for example, right now I have twelve streams of income, but like five of them are not working right now because of what just it's happened. Shut down, yeah. yeah, it's shut down, um, or they're they're working, but they're bringing very little money, like pennies. But there's seven other streams of income, and so what happens is when five are all of a sudden not working or flowing, I there's no panic anymore, whereas there used to be panic. And I think that if everyone could learn how to set themselves up that way, it, you'd be so much less stressed and, and happy because it's gonna happen. There's always gonna be waves, there's always gonna be ebbs and flows, there's always gonna be time that this income stream works and this one doesn't. There's certain income streams I have right now that I didn't even intend to be income streams. I was just doing it because I loved doing it. Like for example, on Instagram, I just loved taking pictures. I love documenting life. Like that's something I've done since I was 15. It's very clear what you, I, that I, you I like do, to do it. Yeah, I have kept a daily journal for 18 years now and I like putting pictures in there. So I like doing that. In, uh, Instagram for the first like seven, eight years, there were 
there was no monetary anything tied to that. There was no brand deals. There was nothing. I just did it because I loved it. And now a lot of brands only sponsor on Instagram. Right. It used to be just a side thing to YouTube. Like if you got sponsored on YouTube, you could do an Instagram post that's like tied into it. I don't know one single YouTuber that makes more money off of YouTube than Instagram. No. Right now. I don't know one. Instagram has exploded. Right. And I had no idea. It's just something I liked to do. And I just think that if you find things that you're genuinely passionate about and not looking to get rich quick, you find little things and you just invest a little bit of time. It's like planting seeds and then watering them each day. And this is why my life is like Animal Crossing. <laughs> I just like to see what hybrid flowers come from planting the seeds and watering that's them each advanced, day. First of all, that's advanced Animal Crossing knowledge. I had no idea about hybrid flowers until yesterday when well, you guess showed what? them to me. Steve, the information is available for free everywhere. And this is also like life. It's true. Is that I wanted to know, because I saw people with hybrid flowers, I wanted to know how the fuck they did that. So I went online and I Googled it. And then I was like, oh, I could do that. And then I did it and it happened. And I made for hybrid flowers. And that's what you can do in life. If you see something that someone is doing and you're like, how are they doing that? I want to do that. You can literally learn how to do that. Like yeah. there's so many, I guarantee you anything you want to do right now, there are tutorials out there that break down exactly how to do that. And just like Animal Crossing, our lives are like little islands where we have our people on them, our little villages that we that we control, which is our households. Yeah. And and that's really what you should be taking care of first. Is That's the only thing that you can control is yeah. your little area, your little space with your little people on it. And you're going to be indebted to a raccoon. And that's, it's, you it's know, inevitable. and that just happens. And, and but, but you got to pay your bills to Tom Nook. You got to pay everyone to Tom Nook. You got to pay your bills to Tom Nook, but don't, you don't have to sacrifice the, the, the joy. little pleasantries. And if you can delay gratification and not buy a bunch of clothes and furniture and crazy stuff right away and instead work on your infrastructure, you can, you, you can develop your island into a five star island. And don't tell me out there, you're listening to this and you're <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, Steve and Nikki already got like a sick island and shit. Dude, I, no. I just got a bathroom like yesterday. Yeah. Like, so don't even True. fucking talk to me. He just I didn't got even, his first I didn't bedroom. I have a bathroom for the past like two weeks. Like, I wasn't able to pay it off. And, and it just took like in life, I had to show Steve how to build his wealth. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know how to even talk, how to how to expand my house. I had no idea how to do it. Nikki showed me. And then once I was able to use that he knowledge. He also destroyed my resources. He is a liability. I'm telling you, just like in life, he I had rocks set up on the island where they give you resources every day. You can get so many resources and they take a while to develop. It's an asset that grows. And he destroyed them in one day. Well, uh, okay. All of them. I didn't know. First of all, I didn't know all that all of my assets I didn't know destroyed. That, I, did, I didn't know that I was in your Zen garden when I was destroying your asset. Yeah. I apologize. I mean, it looks exactly like a Zen garden, so like it I don't know how you really look like a Zen garden to me. It's all fenced off. There's a there's a bench there. There's like the now I get very it because deliberate. you said Zen garden to me, but mm -hmm. this was like one in the morning. I'm just fucking around on the island, and I'm like, oh, cool, a rock, and then I'm like, I'm gonna hit it and get so some you money. Smash it. But I didn't know that I had eaten fruit. I didn't know I had eaten fruit. You didn't know how strong you were. I didn't know how strong I was, and so if you eat fruit and you hit the rock, you don't get money from it. Instead, you destroy the rock. And I was like, damn it, I just wanted money from the rock. I didn't want this stupid clay shit. You know, I only got. You know what I got from that? A rock. A piece of clay and a rock. Yeah, I know. But if you would have left it alone, if you wouldn't have destroyed it because you had fruit in your body, you would have had not only the resources day after day after day from that rock that you collect, which is interest. Like if you want to look at it. Self, I need the instant gratification of getting the yeah, money. If you want to look at it metaphorically, but you would also get another rock the next day. So there'd be, instead of three rocks, there'd be four rocks. But now we just have the one rock. Well, no, we have two rocks now. Oh, okay, well, it's been two days. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. to tell you. Yeah, so um, life is like Animal Crossing is what we're trying to it say. It really is. And sometimes um, your neighbor's a penguin, and that's just like life too. I like our penguin neighbor. Me too. She's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know. Like the concept of interest and, and having your money grow money or putting a lot of time and, and or money and or money up front and building an investment or an asset that eventually makes it so that you put very little time and very little money into it but it get, generates a lot of income is how you get financially free and that could be a whole different subject but passive streams of income is how how you get there i know and i'm trying to right now um set up my multiple streams because you talked about how you have like a bunch i have like three but i don't know how to hire a bunch of our like our, our island villager people to like get on a fishing <laughs> boat. Like I don't know how to do that yet because yeah. I would like to not fish anymore in the game. Oh, and I so, don't think you can hire any of our villagers <laughs> to fish for you. 
Oh, I thought that was a pretty good idea. Cause it then, is a good idea. I don't, I just be, don't think they coded that into the game. But then they would be on the fishing boat, and then I wouldn't have to fish anymore. Yeah, maybe in life you can you can do that. You can build a fishing boat. Yeah, but I want to do it in the game though. Yeah, that's I don't, too bad. I'm not really into fishing in real life that, as much. Mm-hmm. But you I, love catching bugs. I do, I love catching bugs. Yeah, that's my thing. So before we end the episode, I just wanted to touch on some passive streams of income to just get your Animal mind going. Animal or in real life? In real life. Okay. So real estate, you can rent. You can buy rental estate and then you just you rent it out but that takes a lot of money up front yeah that's hard so um royalties so movies books shows i think this is up that's your alley my streams yes where you write the movie once and you get paid the royalties uh, for me in acting uh i made a lot of money off of royalties the day rate for acting is like in, uh, for union acting is like 900 bucks which is you know it's decent well compared for, to for a 12 hour day yeah, yeah but then the amount of money that you can make off of the royalties like That's especially a show that went into syndication. Like I, w- I said one line on How I Met Your Mother. That's great. One line, one time, yeah. and I think I made something like fifty thousand dollars. So good in uh, royalties from that. So good. I still get royalties from that. I sometimes still get like a check for a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks from How I Met Your Mother a million years ago because that show went into syndication which means it went over a hundred episodes which it's means beautiful. that you just it just keeps coming that's why some people tell me they're like hey uh, I think that unions used to have a real value but now I don't need them anymore I'm like tell it to fucking actors man Nikki said one line got 50k well it depends sometimes they disrupt more than they help but of course yeah. but I'm talking about I'm like dude just you know, don't be so general yeah but they oh actors used to be treated terribly exactly I always used to watch documentaries on the Wizard of Oz actors oh my god if you ever just want to know like how poorly actors Actors were treated. Holy shit. Oh, man. Read about the Wizard of Oz actors. You used to like chuck them and stuff. So uh, digital goods, this is something that doesn't take a lot of money up front, but it takes a lot of time up front. But creating digital goods, like I mentioned earlier, creating like courses for people. Ebooks were a thing for a while. I don't know if they're still a thing. They are. But, um, you know, like writing, writing a book, a digital book. All that stuff you can. Yeah, you don't have to um, wait for a publisher to publish you. You can go get Designing an app. Mm-hmm. Designing a website, all of that stuff. Businesses that are self-reliant, you know, where you could you just hire a manager and they run your business. That takes a little bit more time, a lot of more time, but it's it's still something that creates passive income for you down the line. So any of those subjects, though, you can read tons of books on. You can watch videos on. There's so much information out there that I feel like people aren't taking advantage of because they were never trained to or they were never told to or they never thought about it that way and I just feel like I wish that I could break the system for people more Yeah, because the system is not designed for you to get ahead it is not designed they don't want you to win they don't in the wise words of DJ DJ Khaled Khaled, man he said it that is very true they don't want you to win because you know what would help them the most is for you to be a good employee and not complain and be trained to think that all you need to do is have the one job and then you'll be okay and you're not okay it's actually more risky to do that than anything else they'll say like oh it's high risk to do this other stuff you cannot sit with us you know to to, to build assets that's really high risk that's hard to do it's it's hard to do it takes a lot of it takes money to make money or all that and all that stuff and that's just designed to keep you keep you in your you are making money take your money and save your money so that you can break free of the bullshit system that's the game and you could do a whole episode on investing and stuff and we have Mm mm-hmm um, that was our second episode of Show They Don't Tell You was yep. also with Joe Jitsukawa on investing. But oh, that's an hour, guys. That's a lot. That's a lot and for way, you to digest. And I hope that I was articulate enough with, with stuff. I didn't want to come off as luxury or insensitive to what's going on right now in this time period. But I feel like if more people just knew about the shit they don't tell you yep. about money management and creating cash flow and assets, I feel like... There'd be a lot more happier people right now. Yeah, dude, it's about trying to help people be more productive because we all want to yeah. do that. Everyone and some wants people want to be more productive, and they just don't know how. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so I hope that helped. Let us know if it did, or if there's anything that you wanted more information about that I didn't touch on. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. I hope you're doing well out there. We yeah. love you. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.